A subscriber asked a couple questions about the model shown here. Those questions are what are the free air and the Bouguer anomalies in the model? And a couple questions you might want to ask before you answer those questions would be is there significant surface topography? If there is significant surface topography, then one would have, and you're collecting, you're making your measurements on the surface, then one would have variations in the elevation above a reference uh, datum that you would have to compensate for. Another question you would want to ask would be, what is the datum elevation? Uh, we could assume that it was sea level. It might be something different. And a third question would be, what is the replacement density? So we've got a density in this Graben-like feature, of 2,000 kilograms per cubic meter, but it's underlain by a interval with a much higher density of 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So what do you choose as your replacement density it might really depend on what's going on in the areas surrounding your model, but in this case, we don't have any particular um, information. The surface is flat, has a constant elevation of zero. Now, the datum elevation isn't given, so we would be forced to assume something like zero. And a replacement density also isn't given. So um, what does that leave us with? Well, since the surface is flat, and we assume that the datum elevation is zero, there is no free air correction. And we showed earlier, just for reference here, that the free air correction was related to the change in G with increased distance from the center of the Earth. So we have this as our acceleration due to gravity, just from Newton's uni universal law of uh, gravitation. We take the derivative of this, we get dg dr. This gives us minus two, it should be a capital R there, sorry, minus two gm over r cubed. And this would be equal to minus 2 over r times g. We recognize that gm over r squared is embedded in here, and that's basically just g. So we end up with minus 2g over r as the change in the acceleration with a change in distance uh, from the center of the Earth. So dg then in this case would be minus 2 over r g dr, and dr would be your elevation. So if we did have topography along the surface here, then you know our up and down variations above the datum uh, or even below the datum would be uh, represented as h or as dr. And this would be the changes associated with those changes in elevation. And that would be our free air correction. So d, g, or h just represents the elevation above some reference elevation or datum, which in this case we would assume to be zero or sea level. Now, just again, just to tie, in, tie back into some basic concepts, we remember that G varies with latitude. Uh, the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's an oblate spheroid. It's flattened along the polar axis. G varies with latitude and increases towards the poles because the poles are closer to the center of the Earth. They're about uh, 20, 21 kilometers or so closer to the center of the Earth. So you would expect the acceleration due to gravity to be larger at the higher latitudes. And here we see that it reaches a little over 983. The units here are gals and drops down to about 978 gals at the equator. So if we wanted to calculate the free air correction, uh, we can make it easy. We'll just assume that we live in the equatorial region. And we have g over here as in this equation, basically, when uh, phi is equal to 0, all these terms drop out because the sine of uh, uh, phi is 0. So we end up with 978.03185. We substitute that in for g. R in this case, um, the equatorial radius of about 6,378,137 meters. And just plugging uh, those values into this expression here, we get uh, for one meter uh, for dr, we get minus 0 
milligals per meter. This would be the, remember this would be the change in your, in the acceleration due to gravity as you, as you move to higher and higher elevations. Uh, the correction would be to remove that change, so the correction would actually be positive. So R of theta, dg, dr of theta, um, we have down here the radius uh, varies from about uh, a little over 6,355,000 to uh, about uh, 6,377,000 or, or, or so in terms of radius. And then we see dg, dr, obviously, as we get uh, closer to the polar region, this change becomes more negative because we're closer to the center of the Earth. So the change in the acceleration due to gravity with the change in elevation of one meter is going to be greater in the polar region than it is in the equatorial region. So these are just general uh, graphical representations of um, those relationships. And you can see here where at 20 degrees um, north or south latitude, we have a DGDR of about minus 0 0.307 at about 33 degrees minus 0 0.3075 milligauss per meter and at about 45 degrees latitude uh, minus 0 0.308. So we can see this uh, DGDR term getting increasingly negative as we go towards the uh, poles. So without information on the datum, you know, having a datum different than zero in the replacement density, we we have to assume that the plate correction 2 pi g rho h is, is going to be zero. So th this would be our plate term. And um, since we don't really have any topography, uh, I think we would be justified in assuming that there is no plate correction, uh, no plate effect in this particular model. So, so what I've shown here is just a model of the acceleration due to gravity of a part of the model that the uh, subscriber presented. And you can see that we drop into this uh, Graben area. Remember, we've got uh, 2,000 2, kilograms per cubic meter. That's the density in this uh, Graben-like feature. And then we have an underlying basal strata, which has a density of 3,000 um, kilograms per cubic meter. And then we have these objects in here that have a circular cross-section, and I'm just assuming that they're, this is a plan view, I'm just assuming that they're cylinders. And they produce pretty small anomalies. These anomalies, if you can see over here, are a little bit less than 0.2 milligals relative to the background, let's say, in the, over the uh, Graben. And also, likewise, up here for this anomaly, which is... Um, this anomaly is centered at uh, 15 meters, and I believe in this anomaly is centered around 10 meters. So this, uh, this object is a little bit closer to the surface, but the density contrast is a little bit less. Over here it's a little bit greater, but it's uh, uh, at a greater depth, located at a greater depth. So it produces an anomaly which is about the same size as the anomaly we see over this shallower feature. But this would be the general shape of the anomaly, assuming a uh, um, kind of a background rec reference density of 3,000 uh, uh, 3, kilograms per cubic meter, the, the anomaly is, is negative, associated with these relatively negatively uh, negative density contrast features. So, um, so we have a neg negative anomaly that varies, that drops from about zero to minus one uh, milligal here in this uh, this Graben over these features. Now, now taking a look at another part of the model posed by the subscriber, we can see this larger cylindrically shaped feature. At least I've modeled it as a cylinder. It has a circular cross section. Uh, you can see that it produces an anomaly which is much broader. And if you remember back to our discussions of simple geometrical objects, you remember that for a cylindrically shaped feature, the anomaly associated with the uh, 
cylinder will drop off to one half of its maximum value at a distance uh, equal to the depth to the center of that cylindrically shaped feature. Now, here's a dashed line which shows you where the this cylindrical feature, the, the anomaly associated with it. And it's kind of hard to tell where these uh, gravity observation points here are spaced at um, uh, 20 meters. So this distance here is about 60 meters. Now you can mark that here as we go from the peak over to this area here. We can see that, yes, it, you know, it appears to have dropped off by about uh, uh, you know, half of its uh, amplitude. But now if we just set the, all the densities in the surrounding objects to um, uh, you know, the background density, then we just see this anomaly sitting here by, its, uh, by itself. So uh, we um, now have a look at the anomaly associated with this feature. And it's a little bit easier to see if we think back to uh, simple geometrical objects. It's a little bit easier to see that um, this anomaly drops off to about one half of its minimum value, I guess rises up to about uh, one half of its maximum value. Uh, over the 60 meter interval, it reaches a, a maximum negative value of about point, uh, negative 0.19 milligauss. And up here, it rises uh, up to about 0 0.095 um, uh, milligauss. So, so this is a good rule of thumb. And if you remember back to your simple geometrical objects, uh, we could construct this anomaly using the diagnostic positions uh, that we had uh, talked about previously. In fact, we could use, uh, for a half plate, we could uh, describe how the anomaly drops off across the edges of the graben. We could describe what the anomaly looks like with this feature here, add them all together, and uh, so on. So this, this is a useful uh, question, and it uh, does serve as a... Um, good example and a good reminder of some issues that we discussed uh, previously. So the uh, subscriber asked this question. Oh, it's been a good while ago. I didn't have a chance to put a response together, but, but it's a good question. And it makes us think about some of the, the ideas that we've already uh, discussed. So uh, I hope, hope this is of, of interest. And uh, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you later.